Welcome everybody. We have a speaker, Dr. Christoph Funk today, who is located here in Gießen at the ZOI and is research associate of the SCG Nexus Network. And he will present on about his ongoing research about differences in SDG reporting of research articles using zero-shot text classification. So the floor is yours. Yeah, hello and welcome everyone. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for having me, and I really look forward to yeah, spending the next 30, 35 minutes um, presenting research on text mining and sustainable development goals. Yeah, and today I would like to present a joint work with Elena Tönnies, Ramona Teuber, and Lutz Breuer, where we use a uh, modern natural language processing, processing classification task called zero-shot text classification, which will allow us to analyze the scientific discourse on the 17 SDGs. And I will try to, to go not into too much technical details here today, but rather present our results as intuitively as possible. Um, I don't think I need to go into too much detail here about what we all know about the Sustainable Development Goals that in September 2015, the UN set out to transform the world by 2030 with um, adopting the 17 Sustainable Development Goals and 169 targets, ranging from SDG 1 to end poverty in all its forms everywhere, of a gender equality, SDG 5 to SDG 17, partnership for the goals. The sustainable development goals um, adopted by the UN are currently driving most development policies globally. And with these 17 goals, the 169 targets, and over 230 indicators to monitor and track the progress, um, yeah, countries may lose actually sight of the synergies and the trade-offs between goals and between the targets. And we in the SDG Nexus Network, we promote the Nexus approach as a common research framework. And my presentation today and our research can be seen as part of Nexus 5, the SDG monitoring, where we try to get a comprehensive view on all the SDGs, SDGs simultaneously. And of course, approaches are being developed to identify and quantify these synergies and trade-offs. And most of these approaches are trash, of course, the national scale, as it's typically the level that the SDGs are to be reported in. But of course, you can think about synergies and trade-offs also relevant at the global level and, of course, at the subnational scale, where arguably um, yeah, less research is underway. And, of course, understanding the synergies and the trade-offs between the goals and targets is extremely important for us. For one, of course, it's always a good idea to minimize, to minimize trade-offs and to maximize synergies. But, of course, it's also a good way to avoid wasting resources. resources. And, yeah, the research in the field on the SDGs and generally is rapidly increasing. And I think this is a good time to take stock of the recent advances in the literature. Of course, there are information incorporated in the scientific literature that can help improve policy making to achieve then uh, 17 SDGs. And we will argue that text mining natural language processing provides a necessary tool to scope with this vast amount of textual data where natural language processing is a combination of computational linguistics with machine learning that allows the computer to actually then to process human language in the form of text. And what I would like to do to do is I would like to talk about two main research questions. For one, which of the SDGs are actually most frequently discussed in research? And second, which of these SDGs are most discussed in a single country or worldwide? Um, our contribution to the literature is, is threefold. Um, for one, we review the scientific literature on the SDGs, which will allow us to draw conclusions about the focal point of scientific discourse worldwide. Second, we show that abstracts contain, contain the most relevant information on scientific articles related to the discussed SDGs. Um, especially the second part seems yeah, trivial at first because one would actually expect that the abstract should contain the most important information or the most important results of a scientific article. However, one has to keep in mind that we're interested in information related to the SDGs, meaning that what we look at is that the abstracts show a similar amount in regard to discussed SDGs given the whole corpus. 
And third, we show that zero short, zero short text classification can be a useful tool to label extensive textual information. And this allows us then to provide information beyond the typical UN indicator values. Our main findings can be summarized as follows. We find that SDG 1, no poverty, SDG 2, zero hunger, SDG 4, quality education, and SDG 5, gender equality, that they have a lower average topic probability than the remaining 13 SDGs. Moreover, we find a considerable variation in the scientific discourse across countries worldwide. We will show that SDG 1 and SDG 3 show the most negative correlation between the likelihood of discussion and the average indicator values provided by the UN. And we will show that affordable and clean energy, so SDG 7, SDG 9, 15, and 16, that they show a positive relationship and have a higher probability of being discussed, even if the indicators actually perform well. Okay, so now let's start discussing how we get there. How do we get to our main findings? And the first step that we have to do is let's talk about the actual data that we're looking at. So what we did is we went on Web of Science and used the search query sustainable development goals to identify the articles. So in total, we found 11,515 articles, from whom of which we could actually download 6,874 that were freely available through our institution. And then we removed the non-English text, and we are left with 6,575 articles that remain to our further analysis that we are now try to look in a little bit more detail. So how did we do that? Now, when you think about scientific articles, then it's obvious that they're only available in PDF most of the time. And extracting textual information from such files is actually the first step that you would have to do in order to perform downstream NLP tasks. So accessing information from these files is, however, not that trivial as it may sound when you think about, especially compared to text files or CSV files, for example. Based on our experience, we found that common Python packages such as the PDF miner or Py to PDF, that they not only raise questions regarding the quality of the text extracted from these files, but they also ignore valuable information from the layout of the PDF files. Also, meaning when we applied these layout sensitive models or these non layout sensitive models, um, entire sentences from the PDF were missing or not passed correctly. So, what we are doing is uh, we're using a a better approach in that sense, we use the extraction of the text based on layout information using VILA groups, so text lines or blocks, which is specifically designed for scientific articles and developed by Shannon et al. Um, this will allow us to model high-level layout structures, such as tables, text blocks, images, and so on and so forth, and distinguish between the actual text information. Let me give you an example. So this is how it would actually look like. So with Vila, we're actually able to detect not only the entire corpus, but we actually also be able to label, for example, the date, the type, the title, the author, the body content, and so on and so forth. And this will allow us then in a very good way to extract most of the information. I mean, it's definitely not perfect, but it's definitely better than uh, the typical common Python approaches, PDF miner, for example. Um, of course, it's not perfect, as I said, and we had to still had some issues. So we had to clean manually a couple of these texts to get better semantics and, of course, a cleaner text corpus. So once we did that, once we had all the information from all the 6,500 texts, we were then looking at the question is, which SDGs are actually the most commonly mentioned ones? Um, for this, we use regular expressions. So we count the number of occurrences of SDGs per article. So, for example, we look, we look at the acronym SDG and the trigram Sustainable Development Goals and count this then as SDG or in plural form as SDGs. And of course, for example, for SDG 1, we were counting SDG 1, SDG 1 with an underscore, SDG 1 with a dash in between, SDG 1 written out, SDG 1.1, and so on and so forth. And table 1 here gives a complete overview of the total numbers of the SDGs that we actually counted the number of articles in which the specific SDG occurred at least once, and the average number per article. And the good thing is, as you might expect, the most common term SDG, SDGs, are used most frequently in the average, um, with about 26 times per article. 
What's very interesting here is also we found 111 articles that do not explicitly mention the word SDG or SDGs in the corpus. So actually, these are articles where the term sustainable development goal only appeared either in the acknowledgements, in the fundings, or in the keywords, but not in the main body. And since one could argue that then they are actually not talking about these SDGs, we actually neglected them for our further analysis. And then what we find is that the number of articles mentioning a particular SDG varies actually quite widely, right? ranging between 553 for SDG 9 to 1,314 for SDG 3. Um, and in particular, we find that SDG 1, 2, and 3 are actually the most frequently discussed in the scientific literature that we were looking at. In addition, also the average number per article can provide a first yeah, indication of the relative importance of each SDG in the scientific discourse. So for instance, we found that SDG 6, clean water and sanitation, has actually been mentioned 4.15 times per article, while SDG 17 has only been mentioned 2.8 times. Good. Should be noted here, however, that of course, that the number of mentions of a particular SDG does not really allow for a conclusive judgment on the importance of the individual goals. So for example, think about SDG 13. So a text may not be explicitly mentioning SDG 13 in an article, but the article might yet even discuss um, actions that are required to combat climate change and its impacts. Um, and therefore, the complete text should contain more information which would then highlight the importance of the further NLP task that we are doing and the zero-shot text classification. In order to do that now, we first have to introduce the model a little bit for what we're actually doing. And we start simple by introducing, talking about BERT, so the actual text mining approach or the actual language model that we are using. So BERT stands for the bidirectional encoded representation from transformers. BERT is a pre-trained model by Google and is able to detect bidirectional representations from unlabeled text by jointly looking at both sides. For example, let's have a look at this, uh, this sentence here. If you try to predict the nature of the word bank in both of these sentences, by only taking either the left or the right context into account, we will make an error at least in one of the two given examples. So it's very important to look at the context of these texts. And BERT is actually able to do that by considering the left and the right side simultaneously. And the good thing about this Google pre-trained BERT model is that we can just add one additional layer in the end, which will then allow us to do zero-shot text specification. And while this model by Google is, um, is a transformer model pre-trained on a large corpus, including 2,500 2, million words from Wikipedia and 800 million words from an additional book corpus. And it trains itself in a self-supervised fashion. So that means it's pre-trained on raw text only and there is no human labeling required in this. And it's basically pre-trained by two objectives. For one, it uses masked language modeling. So it takes a sentence then uh, randomly discards 50% of the words in the input and, and then run, runs the entire mass sentence again and tries to predict it. For example, in this sentence here, how are the word mask, so that's the masked word, doing today? And then the model tries to find out based on its own that you has actually the highest probability here. And of course, the next step would then be that the BERT model uses next sentence prediction NSP. Um, example, we have two sentences. Sentence one, so I'm going outside. Now the model predicts if the following sentences is actually coherent with the text, if it makes sense. So for example, I will be back after six. Would actually make sense. The model would predict yes. The second sentence, when I say, you know nothing, John Snow, that's obviously not related to the first one. It will predict no. And in this way, it's training itself. And then we can use this for further downstream NLP tasks. So what we do is then we use zero-shot learning. So what is this? Also traditionally, um, zero-shot learning is most often referred to a very specific task. It means 
learn a classifier on one set of labels and then ev evaluate them on a different label that the classifier has never seen before. Also, more broadly speaking, get a model to do something that it wasn't explicitly trained to do so. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, there are typically several approaches to do that. Um, one, we could only use the embeddings only, but our model has then another end layer, the natural language inference layer, which allows us to do zero-shot text classification. So more broadly speaking, um, we use the semantic knowledge from the base model plus the fine-tuned NLE model, which will allow us to classify a sequence with label never seen before. And of course, to understand this, we have to also ask ourselves, what is NLE? <laughs> so let's have a quick view on natural language inference, NLE. And NLE considers two sentences, the premise and the hypothesis. And the task of the model is then to determine whether the hypothesis is true, which we would call an attainment. If it is false, which would be called a contradiction, or which is of its undetermined or neutral, given the premise. So for example, when you look at the sentence here, a man inspects the uniform of a figure in some East Asian country, and I give the computer the hypothesis that the man is sleeping, then ideally it should predict a contradiction, meaning it is not true. And we will use this um, approach in a little bit different way, proposed by Yin et al. in 2019 where we use a pre-trained MNLE sequence pair classifi classifier as a zero-shot text classifier. So what does it mean? Um, so the idea is basically to take the sequence we're interested in, we label this as a premise. So we take any sentence that we have in our corpus, label this as a premise, and then we give them some labels and try to check if these are true or not. And I think that's a bit technical, so that's why I brought an example. Um, I took this here from Hugging Face, from the from their homepage, from the model. But consider, for example, the sentence, who are you voting for in 2020? I give the model this sentence, and then I predefine a couple of labels, possible topics. For example, foreign policy, Europe, election, business, 2020, and so on and so forth. And then let the, run, let, let the zero check text classification run over it. And ideally, it should find that the sentence is actually talking about election, politics, and the year 2020, give, which it gives a high confidence, and it's not talking about foreign policy or Europe, for example. We can allow for multiple correct topics, meaning that multiple tables can be true at the same time, which we will also do for the SDGs. But in principle, it would also be possible to only do it for um, single label, which means that the percentages have to sum up to one then. Okay, what are we doing now is we, um, we have our entire text corpus. We have in total roughly 1.8 million sentences. And for each of the sentences, we try now to classify if this sentence is talking about SCG1, SCG2, up to SCG17. So for each sentence, we get a probability value for all over the SCGs for 1.8 million sentences. Okay. So what are we doing before we start actually doing that? Um, I would show you one more thing where we would like to talk about the topic representation of all the articles. So the problem for text data is that we cannot produce descriptive statistics about our data set in the usual way. However, it's possible that we, that we obtain information about the latent structure of our data um, using topic modeling. And the most widely used topic modeling approach is called ADA. That's fairly old, introduced in 2003. And what we are doing here in order to be also consistent with um, the rest that we are doing is we use word topic, which is a clustering approach on word embeddings. So basically we're using the word model, which allows us to capture the semantics. While the typical standard LDA approach would only use the term frequency as an input, which only includes the word count, but not the semantic meaning of the words. And then we do that, we get a couple of topics. So this figure here is, shows the 12 most frequent topics with 10 words per topic from our entire text corpus with the 6,000, roughly 500 articles. And I only show you the top 12. We actually were looking at the top 20, but for readability, I only show the top 12 here. Um, first of all, what we find is, as expected, 
that the topics predominantly should talk about SDGs, or which is a good sign because we actually looked at only texts that should deal with SDGs. That's good. So we find two topics that actually mostly deal with the general SDGs. When we look at the whole 20 topics that we're looking at, we find that SDGs 1, 2, and 17 are not represented in the topics. This was a bit surprising for us at first when you think about that, especially SDG 1 and 2 are very frequently counted in the articles. One possible explanation is that the terms related to ending poverty and, of course, to zero hunger are maybe not clearly associated with these topics and maybe caught in other topics. So that could happen. However, we find, for example, that SDG 3 is very central to the scientific literature because it appears in different topics, actually in three, but I'm only showing here two. Um, one is related to health, universal health coverage, and the other one is related to healthcare, woman birth, and matern uh, maternity. And also, very interestingly, we find that COVID-19 already showed up as a topic. Um, so it not only dominated the, the world news over the last two years, only made its way into sustainable development goals and the scientific literature in here, and um, it clearly brought also some challenges, when you think about it, to achieving the SDGs by 2030. So it's actually been estimated that living or that people living in extreme poverty could actually rise by over 700 billion people, which is a huge blow, which means it's definitely a topic worth addressing. Okay, what, is, what did we do next? Now, yeah, we also tried to validate our model. Validation is... Um, in zero-shot classification, as one advantage of zero-shot classification is we do not need to label a large data set. But of course, on the other hand, the drawback is if we do not, if we do not um, label data, we are not able to validate our model because typically what you have is you have a training data set and a test data set and you train the model on a trained data set and then check the performance on a test data set. But obviously, we cannot do this here. So what we are doing is um, we validate our model by using uh, UN progress reports with the UN published annually for each of the SDGs. And we were thinking that these progress reports should actually contain similar semantics about the SDG performance as scientific articles. It has about the advantage that we don't have to label this data. So what we are doing is in this heat map is what you can see here is on the x-axis, you can see in, uh, sentences from the progress reports grouped by the corresponding SDG and thus by the gold standard label, so to say. And on the y-axis, you will see the probability of a label that our model gives us. And the probability for label should be highest for the sentence from this corresponding progress report Meaning, for SDG 1, we find that our model predicts that if a sentence is really talking about SDG 1, that we also find this most dominantly for SDG 1. However, as you can also see, um, especially SDG 10 seems to be classified for over all of the sentences. Um, so to say, for SDG 10, you would argue it might not work as perfectly as you would ho ideally hope to. But when you think about SDGs, uh, SDG 10, um, this could actually be to SDG 10's numerous linkages to all the other SDGs. Um, furthermore, when you think about reduce and inequality, this is actually something that can be applied to several other SDGs. And so, as so to say, SDG 10 could be framed as a general goal, which should be achieved, which is why we find the highest topic probabilities here. Moreover, what we also did is we looked a little bit more closely about the validation by looking at a summary of our results for different um, different document types. So, for one, we look at the full body the full text that we have of the 6,500 articles. Then we look only at the abstract of the 6,500 articles. And in the third step, we actually use all the abstracts from all the 12,000 articles that we found 
also for the ones which you cannot download. And what we find here in the spider diagram is actually that it seems to be the case that the abstracts seem to contain the most relevant information in terms of the SDGs they're talking about actually in every case. So which is actually good. Um, and we also find that the probabilities for the long documents, so for the entire articles, are in general lower than the, for the abstracts alone. And I think for our point of view, this makes very much sense because when you think about an article, what is an article typically talking about? Well, it's not specifically talks about an SDG, but it might have also a literature section. It might have also a methodology section. It might have description of data. And since we are computing an average over the whole article based on each of the sentences, it makes sense that these have lower probabilities. However, what we will do now is we will just look at all the abstracts because we can see that all the relevant information are basically contained in there. And it has also the advantage that it saves computation time and so to save money. What we then do is we look at um, the results of our zero-shot text classification um, in a detailed way to discuss the scientific discourse on the SDGs worldwide. And what we do is we use information about the corresponding author's address, which is contained in the Web of Science metadata. So what we do is we say uh, for each corresponding author, we take the university address as a proxy for the country of origin of this article. I mean, arguably, this is probably not the only way to assign a country to each article. However, since normally the corresponding author is generally a senior researcher, should have contributed significantly and is responsible for the communication, we believe this is an appropriate choice. And this will allow us then to group the articles and compare them in the scientific discourse worldwide. So what I will show you here now is box plots for each of the SDGs, summarizing the topic probability for each SDG in each country. And what we can clearly see here is that SDG 1, 2, 4, and 5 seems to have a lower average topic probability than the remaining SDGs. However, we also find a considerable variation among the countries. So for example, in SDG 3, we find that uh, in Ukraine, the topic probability is about 11%, while here the highest one is actually Uganda with 20.8%. And we find similar, or different, even greater differences, um, of course, as you can see here, for all the other SDGs. What we can also do is, which is probably a little bit nicer to show the results, is we can map the probabilities by country of origin for the SDGs. So I'll show you here an example for SDG 7. Um, what we do here is we only look at countries, though, that have at least 10 articles in order to avoid any bias to countries with few articles. And um, we only look here at the abstracts of the articles. So what we find, for example, for SDG 7 is that SDG 7 seems to be most likely discussed in Tunisia with 25.5%, in Romania with over 20%, and in uh, Arabia and Qatar with about 20%. And my yeah, one possible explanation for this is maybe the scientific discourse um, regarding the solar power plants in the Desert Tech project in Tunisia, or maybe also the shift from fossil fuels to renewable energy, which might be relevant for uh, Arabian Emirates, for example. We could also look, for example, for an SDG 13, this seems to be a prominent topic in Tunisia, again, with about 30%, China, 24%, while it's least discussed in Jordan and Israel with about 11%. Okay, one more thing we would like to do is we also wanted to know how the scientific discourse in a country is related to the actual development towards the SDGs. So when you think about it theoretically, you would actually assume that, that when a country is facing very difficulties and challenges in achieving the 2030 agenda, um, then a country should also be more inclined to discuss these challenges within the scientific community, ideally. 
And what I'm showing you here is we show the heat map that represents the pairwise Pearson standard correlation coefficients between the over, over official average SCG scores on the x-axis and our discussion probability on the y-axis. And what we find is that the correlation for SCG1 and SCG3 is fairly negative with minus 0 0.31, minus 0 0.35, meaning that this is actually in line with the expectations because the scientific community tends to discuss these SCGs less in a country given the average SCG value. And on the other hand, for SCG7, for example, um, here we find a fairly high value for SCG9, for example, SCG16, SCG17, uh, 15 and uh, 16, sorry, these two. That means that these are discussed more frequently in the scientific discourse or in a community than you would actually expect, while all the others are more or less in line with our expectations. Okay, so to sum up, what did we learn today? Well, for one, we found that the academic literature on SDGs has been growing steadily in recent years. Um, we have seen that we need, in order to yeah, look at these vast amounts of textual data, that we use that we need to use NLP techniques. And we use a modern NLP classification task called zero short text classification, which allows us to analyze the scientific course discourse of the 17 SDGs. And with zero short classification, we're able to classify text without a need of costly training, a costly training data set. We find that or our results basically suggest yeah, that SDG 1, 2, 4, and 5 have a lower average topic probability than the remaining SDGs. We find a considerable variation in the scientific discourse worldwide. We find that SDGs 1 and 3 show a negative correlation between the likelihood of being discussed and the indicator values, while the opposite is true for SDGs 7, 9, 15, and 16, where they're actually more discussed than they would actually expect. Um, yeah, where do we go from here? So what's, what's the last point I would like to make is, now yeah, what we are doing here is yeah, actually, we're looking at the topic probabilities of SDGs per country of origin by using the corresponding authors as a proxy. Arguably, we could also tend this to make this in another way. However, what would be very interesting, and this will be something for further research, is that we should look at the um, actually, the relationship, also actually, actually, the country that the text is actually talking about, which country they are talking about, and take it from there. Well, this will be for further research. Yeah, in this sense, thank you very much for your attention. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to your questions and comments on this. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot, Christoph. So, comments and questions are more than welcome so either you can place uh, place it in the chat or simply raise the hand yeah that's what i can usually see okay martin hello hi christoph hello everyone um <laughs> i'm sorry i i, I really uh, um, enjoyed uh, learning more about these uh, machine learning techniques uh, with which i'm not very familiar and uh, I think it's amazing to see what is the, there, not only in terms of the software packages apparently now, but also uh, indicators and technologies to go into that uh, analysis. However, I have to admit that um, I'm, I, I, in kind of mid of your presentation, I, I struggled in, uh, in following you further. And that had to do with uh, the fact that I, uh, I, could not, I could not give full sense to some of the um, uh, of the concepts that you used. And one of them uh, is the one that you also have prominently in your conclusions, namely the topic probability. Could you please once more explain what is a topic probability? Yeah. Also what we are doing is, maybe I go back to this, mm, this example here uh, first. So what we are doing is, we're looking at 1.8 million sentences. And for each sentences, we try to find out, does the sentence talk about SDG 1, 2, or SDG 17? So we will get, so to say, a confidence of the model that this sentence actually talks about SDG 1 or SDG 2. Mm -hmm. And then we summarize this as an average score for each article. 
So that meaning that ten uh, percent of the ten percent of the whole text talks as actually about SVG one, for example, or SVG two, and so on and so forth. So we try to okay. basically label the text, give the text a label. Does this text talk about SVG one or SVG five or SVG seventeen? And of course, since the texts are not only talking about one SVG mostly, but multiple SVGs at the same time, we can label that accordingly. And that is the topic probability. Yeah, genau. Yeah, that's the topic probability for how we call it. Yeah. So that that is the the probability that a text talks about any of the SDG topics. Yeah, that any the, of the that, SDGs actually. You know that the entire text is talking about the uh, this SDG. You know. Okay, that's that's what I understand. Uh, but then I still have a question on your other uh, figure, I think, which is on the next slide, where you connect this topic probability to other keywords. Ah, okay. Um, maybe I didn't explain that in a, in a good way. This is uh, different. Also, this is, um, so what you typically do is the topic representation is uh, different from zero-short text classification. I should have stressed this point a little bit more. I'm sorry. So what we, we want to find, we wanted to basically validate and check Does our model find that we're actually talking about SDGs in general? Does it, because if we wouldn't have found this, then we would know that the model is actually, or that the BERT model itself is actually useless. But luckily, we found here that they are actually talking about SDGs in general, all of the texts. Can you please tell me once more what do I what, what do I learn from this figure here? <laughs> okay, so typically, what you, also the problem is here that. You're muted. Ah, okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> so the problem is yeah that when you have text data, you cannot typically do descriptive statistics about the data. Uh, so if you want to learn more about the, the structure of your text, you have to use an NLP technique called topic modeling. And this is what we are doing here. We try to learn or try to get information about what is the text actually in general talking about. And this is Yeah, it's it's a bit fairly complicated because it's used some kind of clustering approach in the background, but find then actually words that are closely connected in one cluster, which we could then be able to label as one of the SDGs. So we labeled these here by hand. No? Also, we, we get basically these words. Then you have to find out. Then you have to find out for yourself or define for yourself what kind of topic this might be. Okay, you take the words from the article. So basically, they take all the words. The numbers are frequencies, or what? Genau, yeah. so to say. Also, it's not directly frequencies, um, because in word and because in this word topic cluster, it's like a clustering approach where you look at words in a multidimensional space, so to say, where they where they are closed, grouped together. It's a little bit more complicated than the normal LDA approach, but in principle, yeah, it's frequencies. And does this table, my last question, does this have anything to do with the topic probabilities that you just explained not, before? No, no, no. It has, not, has nothing to do with the topic probability. Okay. Okay. This was okay, just like thanks. an idea to get like kind of a descriptive statistics of our whole text corpus to find out what are the actual topics we are talking about. So the idea was like if we would, if we would have find completely different topics that has nothing related to SCGs, then we would already know that our model makes no sense that we don't have to use zero-short text classification on this anyway. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So it's like a cross validation, so to say, more or less. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Now it has yeah. become clearer to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Maybe just to stress for one more time, Christoph, because this methodology is quite new, right? I mean, that's yeah. why it's uh, to have this validation, which is not like such a common approach, maybe to add this in order to yeah, yeah. cross check yeah. whether it's working or not. So maybe for the others to stress this. Okay, thanks. Um, Sarah and Pavlina. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks, Krista. It's really interesting. Um, Thank you. I also have a question maybe I just haven't understood. Um, like the, one of your main results was that um, according to the topic probabilities, um, SDGs uh, one, two, four, and five had low the lowest topic probabilities genau. but in your yeah. first slide when you list the numbers of papers um with the sdgs the different sdgs mentioned um in by actual numbers of articles those sdgs at least one and two came out on top 
So yep. how does that how yeah, does that reconcile? Yeah, it's it's a fair, it's a good point. It's actually um, not easy to answer, so to say, in the sense that, also again, when we show here the yeah the, 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 the yeah, yeah exactly. So we were also a little bit puzzled in the beginning that no poverty, zero hunger, and good mm -hmm. health and well-being that they are actually mentioned quite often. But now that the topic probabilities are quite low, it seemed a bit of a puzzle. But the problem is that we're looking here also at the whole text and the semantics of the text. And our explanation would be that, especially for no poverty and zero hunger, that the words that you use to describe these two SDGs, that they are also likely to be caught up in other SDGs. And that's why we find maybe there are lower topic probabilities. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely, I agree with you, it's definitely a weak point of our uh, work, so to say, which we have to probably stress a little bit more in the paper later onwards. Yeah. We were also a little bit puzzled by this. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Yeah. Pavlina? Are you Your still to... uh, Yeah. No, not. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Chris. Very interesting. Um, yeah, super interesting. I was uh, wondering, okay, so basically the analysis you are using is not detecting words per se, but the meaning, right, of the of the SDGs, yeah? No. So basically yeah. it's semantics. Yeah, it's semantics. Um, so it gives you a probability for mm -hmm. each, of the, each of the label we define a probability. Exactly. Um, and then I, if I understood correctly, your unit of analysis is sentence, right? Exactly, yeah. Um, okay, so I was wondering if uh, you think or you have like thought about it, if you're losing information, uh, only focusing on sentences. If, for example, if you spread to paragraphs, do you think uh, it would make more sense um, to kind of... I, I was just being curious, mm -hmm. uh, pointing to the fact that maybe kind of trying to undermine your argument that uh, focusing only on abstracts maybe would not give you the full picture, no? that maybe actually you should, that maybe the paragraphs as unit of analysis during the whole article would give you another kind of uh, impression of the of the story. So yeah, that would be my question. Like you yeah. take sentence, if this uh, tool has been used for paragraphs, for example. Yeah, so the, the problem is actually that the maximum length uh, uh, that you can actually use with this BERT model is actually 512 uh, tokens. So it's like, uh, depending on the length of the paragraph, it might not even work. Um, we also tried that actually doing that on app, uh, on paragraphs, like, like you said. But in general, it seems to be that the model is working better on sentences. Mm -hmm. Also when you look at, all, at single sentences and then average over the whole article, it, the model seems to work uh, better. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. But we were also thinking about this. We, we tr tried both approaches, but the sentence approach works better in general. Yeah, maybe it will be interesting to kind of for the validation also of the results to kind of select uh, maybe 10 articles and then yeah. human being to analyze them through more systematic qualitative uh, analysis to see if they're really, uh, no, if yeah. really the, the, the same impression is there. That would be more interesting. It, it would be maybe additional. Yeah, that, that's actually a good point. So actually what we tried, what we did here, here is um, as a disk matrix, in this heat map, you can yeah see that the model is obviously not always able to detect or giving the highest probability to one of the topics. And what was very interesting is we tried to, to label that by hand, by ourselves also. And in a lot of cases, we were also not sure if we should give this, tell this is SCG1 or is it, is it SCG10, for example. So uh, that kind of gave us the impression that in principle it works, mm -hmm. but of course it's not perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, the, the good thing about it is that it allows us to classify 1.8 million sentences in like, I think it was like less than 24 hours. Also, actually fairly fast. So a human would never be able to, to do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And then one final question. Uh, I think it was the final heat map. I don't know if it was this one where you basically say that um, the scientific articles do not reflect what is supposed to be discussed in that country yep. and what is supposed to be discussed in that country, you have estimated that based on their SDG reports or? Um, nee, also that's like what you see here is the, the average SDG score of each country. Ah, okay. So maybe a different, um, I have a different, also different, uh, like here for SDGs, SDG 1 and 7, uh, for example. Um, 
So basically for SG1, we find that a lot of times actually that the, although it's a big problem, no poverty, most of the countries that actually, and when you look at the average SEG score, have a range between 80, uh, 85 and 100. But nevertheless, it's negatively correlated. So this is basically, also this is basically the same data now in a different, different format here, so to say. So one downward sloping, and for SEG7, it's upward sloping. Okay, so basically using the same material for... Yeah, we use the same material, okay. but here we use the Pearson standard correlation coefficient okay. so that we can address all of them simultaneously, so to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Aslam and Joanna. Oh, yeah, uh, thanks, Christopher, for your presentation. It's really very interesting, and the model you have shown us is also very interesting. Well, uh, regarding validation, because I, I know for models, it's very important to enter as much uh, data you have in order. I mean, the, the, the more the data you have into the model, the better the results. Is it the same uh, with the model you are using? I mean, as much words uh, you have used, it, the better the results, or it's not the same? Thanks. Yeah, so the problem is like in general, of course, more is always better. But the problem is like with this validation is um, because we are not, also like because it's uh, the, the model is here labeling automatically by itself. We don't have a train in the test data set. We can actually not evaluate it in a typical machine learning sense where you have like a training data set and a test data set. And what we did here is we, we looked in and we're looking at Maybe I should go back. That's the wrong slide. I'm sorry. Um, so what we did here is we tried to find sentences where we know that they talk about a different, uh, a, a specific SDG, and then try to check if our model is actually also labeled to be able to label them correctly. And we used here, I think, roughly three thousand sentences. Um, of course, more would be better in this sense. Also, if we would have ten thousand sentences from UN progress reports and would label them by hand then it would obviously be a little bit better, probably. But I think, yeah, as a 3,000 sentences was the most we could get on uh, giving, uh, yeah, so to say, time and money constraints we had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Hi, Christoph. Hello. Um, I enjoyed very much your, your presentation, Thanks. particularly on the text. Uh, Mining applications. Um, I will come back to the to the comment of, of Sarah uh, regarding this uh, not uh, really important influence of uh, uh, SDG goal number one and two, particularly, and maybe uh, a comment on an, an idea on on that regarding uh, how the text mining applications work. It could be, I think, uh, the case or. A probable explanation could be that particularly on those SDGs are usually uh, approached by the work or the achieval of other SDGs at first. Let's say if you think about no, no poverty, usually uh, many papers will talk about uh, getting quality education or decent work uh, or any others of those as like a kind of a certain path to get to the like the final SDGs. Maybe uh, it will be interesting, interesting if you haven't do that yet that you could cluster the kind of the prob topic probabilities within each um, uh, text uh, in association uh, with the papers that talk about SDG number one and two. So you can grab an idea of uh, how the topics related to other SDGs are also connected to, to those. And I think then you could find an explanation on how these topics are probably less um, uh, cited in the article mm -hmm. itself by semantics, but then they are connected to the development of the other SDGs. Maybe also if it is possible on the place that it uh, that the SDGs are um, talking the, the papers, they usually should be at the beginning on the text and then develop the other ideas. Just an, uh, yeah, an it, idea it, on how this will work. That's actually a very good point. We haven't thought about this. Yeah, it's definitely something 
uh, good take home work, so to say, for us. Um, uh, what we actually, what we try to do is, for example, um, we try to also count uh, how many times when SGG1 was talked in, this, in, the, in, a, in a specific article, how many other times another different SGG has been discussed. And actually, what we actually found is that actually, actually exactly this connection that you also described, yeah, that we found that SCG 1, 2, and 3, that they are most often occurring also together. And I think this also shows a bit this interlinkages because, I mean, zero hunger, no poverty, of course, they, they, they share common indicators and synergies effects. So, yeah, but it's a good point. So we definitely will look into this uh, clustering approach. Thanks a lot. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. Uh, then Martin again and Iskandar. You mentioned in the beginning, Christoph, that you or you authors hope to use this analysis for, for policy advice or do yeah. you think it has policy implications? Uh, which, which are the policy implications? I noted from the uh, frequency table, which I think was arguably the kind of evidence that is most easily interpreted among all the tables that you showed. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, peace had the lowest score. What is the policy implication of that? Well, I mean, in general, we could think probably about potential policy implications. Also one way would be uh, to, since the, the amount of text data is uh, very vast, and there's a lot of information coming on SDGs every day. So policy, policy makes us typically you don't have the time to read all of these. So one way could be we use our model to uh, predefine texts that are only dealing about, for example, SDG 1, no poverty, so that the policymakers have an easier way of uh, only looking at texts that are really interesting regarding this uh, this topic. This could be one way. Um, yeah, on the other hand, um, of course, if you don't have, uh, so like when you look at the, the world map, for example, you could maybe argue that there's a couple of countries where these topics seems to be not that relevant. Yeah? And um, maybe that would be a way of strengthening the scientific research in this direction in this country, for example. Yeah. Okay, that means uh, the research capabilities on the SDGs in the United States should definitely be strengthened more than in many other countries. Yeah, Is maybe that maybe this would be one way to go forward, yeah. I mean, it depends, of, co of course, but it depends also, yeah, of course, on the um, the relationship between the the scores that I showed here. Also, not only on. So, I mean, of course, if you were, if you have like, it seems to be the case that, for example, SDG seven is a very hot topic at the moment, and a lot of people talking about this topic. Although the SDG, average SDG scores of most of the countries is actually quite good already in this sense. And vice versa for SCG SCG one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, Christoph. It's Iskander Abdullayev. Uh, I I think it's, it's very interesting and excellent presentation. I I continue what Martin started to ask about these policy implications. Would you also be ready, for example, compare results of your analysis with not the sentence from UN reports, but the real advancement of SDGs and compare, is this true that this uh, lowest level SDGs, which in your analysis also uh, uh, having a lowest performance in reality? So they, they, there may be also some policy messages like uh, for the research, I mean, focusing on those areas which are lower priority so far. So it will have a much more practical implication. What do you think, Chris, of how much it could be could be uh, feasible? Thank you. So, um, so you basically mean that we should uh, use other texts than scientific literature? Is that is that the direction? No, no. I mean, it, no, no. It's analysis are okay which you have conducted, but if you compare your results with this uh, SDG performance uh, overall global, yeah. Yeah, and then then see is it this trend is also right in in the way how SDGs are implemented. So this means that policies could be focusing on these areas, and second one is of course focusing also researchers on on those on on, on those lower lower SDG uh, focus areas. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. It's a very good point. As I mean, partly yeah, we tried here to do that already by looking at the average SDG scores over all countries 
and the topic probability that we get from our model. But of course, we could also extend this to a single country analysis. Also, this would be definitely doable. And I think also, yeah, very interesting to do. So it's definitely a good point. We also try to look at different trends uh, over time. This is our very tricky because the most of the scientific literature starts already in most of the articles in 2015, 16 or so. So a real big trend analysis is hardly feasible at the moment because the data is not long enough, so to say. Yeah. But thanks, it's a good point. Also, we definitely take that into account that we will look at maybe find a couple of uh, countries that we could explicitly mention in our paper, like making us um, yeah, kind of a cross-check, so to say. That's a good point. Thank you. Okay. Looking at the time, final question, Martin. Hmm. Yeah, just a direct follow-up. Uh, from what you said before uh, about the, the, uh, the, the policy relevance, I'm, I mean, obviously your tool is a, a tool to find out what researchers work on, right? What which yeah. researchers publish about which could be possibly of even higher importance for other researchers rather than policymakers. Yeah? It's a way of doing a, a literature review, basically. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, so I would possibly also follow up to Iskandar and saying, or, or your previous debate, well, for, for, for policy debates, say, preparing a UN summit or something, yeah, you, you may indeed rather want to apply this to policy documents uh, than, than rather than uh, our academic articles. Uh, that would be a way of finding out what do policymakers talk about, and then the conclusion could be, well, there is a gap between what policymakers talk about and what researchers find important, or what the indicators tell about the importance of certain stages of development. Mm -hmm. So that could be an interesting application, too, I think. Yeah, that's and a good that point, would be actually. closer to the policy area. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, sure, that's a good point, yeah. Definitely, I mean, maybe for a follow-up paper, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, interesting, yeah. Thank you. The question about the database, probably, right? How yeah, also, kind of yeah, yeah. Database can you use? But yeah, I mean, if you just start with, I don't know, documents that have a UN label on their front page or something, yeah, whether that's a way of, yeah. I mean, one thing that we're actually currently working on is that we're actually looking also at voluntary national reviews for a country. So this is uh, definitely the next step, um, but we will use this in a little bit different approach where we use... Uh, uh, aspect-based sentiment analysis, but I don't want to. Yeah, it's, I don't want to go into detail here. It's, uh, I think, out of time. Yeah, for this. Yeah, but it's a good point. So we definitely keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And we also have still the Nexus or Nexi on our agenda. I think Christoph, which is also if we speak about synergies, trade-offs, and yep. in general the Nexus approach. Okay, yeah, thanks to everybody for a lively and very constructive discussion. Um, then I would like to close the session for today.